Welcome back to CAS 103 Introduction to Windows 7, Columbia Gorge Community College, The Dells, Oregon. Instructor Linda Hewitt. In this particular video, we're going to be going into Moodle and looking at the week two's work. And one of the things you're going to do after you've done all the lectures and read the PowerPoints and listened to any audio files and maybe done the optional video that's available, you've read the assignment information, and now you're ready to do the computer assignment. Well, the first thing you need to decide is whether or not your computer has, or the computer you're using that at this time, has Microsoft Office on it. If it has Microsoft Office on it, it should have Word, and therefore you can download this file. If you're using a computer that does not have a Microsoft product on it, it does not have Microsoft Office, um, it may have a different brand, WordPerfect, it may have an open source type of file, you may be using Google Docs, you might be doing lots of other word processing type things, but you don't have a Microsoft Word. Now, be careful. In Windows 7, they no longer install the program Works, W-R-O-R-K-S. But should you be trying to do this on a slightly older machine, Yes, I know we're Windows 7, but some people try to get by with an older machine for part of it. What you will find is on the older machines like Vista and even XP, they have a cheapy program that they installed for free for you called Works. Works is great if you don't want anybody able to ever read your files because unfortunately nothing else opens a work file well. So, because of that, I no longer have works on my machine because I am Windows 7. I have found some backdoor workarounds that sometimes will open the files. However, we are not using works for this class, so please don't send it to me in a strange file format. You'll probably end up doing the assignment again. So you need to either use Microsoft Word with the D, or you need to use WordPad. The video about um, how to do a screenshot talks about how to find WordPad. So if you have not viewed that video, you should be taking things in straight order going down here. But if you have not, for whatever reason, you need to go back and do that one. Because I do have Word, that's always the choice. So I'm going to use Word for the download. I am in Google Chrome because I'm in Google Chrome. And it will bring it right down here on the bottom which will then let me make this a little bit smaller, grab it, slide it off, and set it on my desktop and be ready to go or put it to my flash drive. However, if you're not using Google Chrome, you are using Firefox or you are using Internet Explorer, you may want to right click and go save link as. That will bring up the box that will let you then say to put it on your desktop or to put it on your flash drive. I don't have a flash drive installed right now, so I'm going to go with the desktop, and you can save it there. So, you now have it downloaded. Now you need to go open the assignment. And one thing that usually happens when you open an assignment that's been downloaded is it blocks it to protect you. So you have to enable editing. Now it works like any other Word document. You're going to go into the assignment. You're going to think about buying a computer, knowing that if you went out and bought a computer today, you're buying a Windows 8 machine, which is going to be very difficult to use for this class. So hopefully you're not needing to do that, but maybe you'll need to in the near future. And you're going to also remember that we are a PC-based class. So you're not going to tell me about any type of an Apple product. You're not going to talk to me about a Mac or an iPad or an iTouch or any of the Apple-based products. I don't have a thing against them. They just don't work for what we're doing with this class. So you're going to answer the questions about what are you going to do with the machine? How much stuff do you have on it? Are you a picture hog? Do you do a lot of video? How big a hard drive do you have now compared to how big a hard drive will you go need then? If you don't know how to tell what you have on your hard drive, your My Computer is located right here. You can right click it, ask it to show it on the desktop. Once it's on the desktop, it's really easy to double click it. And it will open up your hard drive here. 
or your tools or whichever. C drive is normally your hard drive. And you can see that I basically have 397 gigabytes free out of what they're calling a 570 amount. If I really want to see it, I can right click it and go down to properties and it will bring it up here. If your pink and blue are reversed from mine, so in other words, most of this is blue and only a little bit is left pink, your hard drive is full. You cannot fill it to the brim, like they used to say with the old coffee ad, because if you did, basically your hard drive would not be able to manipulate the items any longer. It's sort of like overstuffing your closet to the point you can't move anything to get anything in and out. You can't get to the back, you can't get to the stuff. Well, your hard drive gets the same way. It can't get to the stuff. So you need to leave about a quarter to a third of your hard drive empty because otherwise you're gonna slow down and it's gonna crash and freeze and you're not gonna be a happy camper. So for me, I know that this hard drive has more than enough space on it because I'm not anywhere near full. So if I was having to buy a new computer, I definitely don't have to buy anything larger. My desktop is not quite that situation. My desktop is to the point I have to run an external hard drive on it because it has a smaller hard drive. So now I've got this Word document I'm going through. We're talking about brand because I've already looked at the PowerPoint. I know that information that I've already had for my instruction. I'm not trying to do this without viewing the PowerPoint that is available here in Word or in, not in Word, I'm sorry, in Moodle about buying and recycling a computer. I've done that first. And now I'm over here down to the rest of the assignment part. Do you have any special needs? Some people do. Um, one of my special needs is I want it as small and as light as I can reasonably get it to have the same features that I need and the price. Oh, and I want a gazillion USB ports, please. Now you're going to come down here, and if you hold your your finger on the control key and put your mouse over this, it becomes a live link you can click on, and it will actually open the internet page for you. Otherwise, you can copy and paste it. And now that I'm out here, I am going to look at whether I'm talking about a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet that has a mistake in it. Obviously, I will get that fixed before you see it the next time the features and the price and the notes and so I have room to do that for three different HP computers of course I can always add more slots there if I want to I need to do one HP at least I need to do at least one Dell I need to do one Acer I need to do one that comes from staples.com in part I picked that because we have a staples store here in the Dells and a lot of people run down to the nearest store to purchase therefore that would be a staples for us if we don't want to go into Portland if you have a brand you'd really like to do, you may substitute it for one of the above. And now I have this all complete. I have saved it with all my information. And I'm going back to my class. And I'm going to hit buying a computer assignment. When it opens, it's going to ask me to upload a file. Don't worry about the dates. That'll be adjusted every turn. And now there's a new way to upload from what we used to do. I can now grab this. Just drag it over, and there it is. And all I have to do is hit Save Changes, Continue, and I can now see that I have my assignment uploaded. Please, you don't have to write me an email or send me a message asking me if you've turned the work in. You can go and look right here. shows that your work is turned in. And it tells you the name of what you turned in there. If you've turned the wrong assignment in there, just hit update this file and go complete it with the correct assignment. If you suddenly threw, accidentally grabbed a picture of your puppy dog and put it there and went, oops, that wasn't supposed to be my buying a computer assignment. That's my puppy. Then just go get the buying the computer assignment, bring it over and do the update, obviously, first. And drag and drop. And if it has the same name, it may ask you to replace. If not, it's just going to say save changes and move on. It will automatically replace what already was there. You don't have to ask me to remove it. You don't have to ask me to do anything. You're in control. And you can do that as many times as you like. Now, some professors do block the number of times you can upload. 
So do make sure you know that for each and every online class you take. Do you get more than one chance to upload or is it one and done? In this class, upload to your heart's content. Hope this helps you get started.